Cobb Memorial Archive was built by Elisha Wiley Cobb in, 19, in 1912 in uh, arts and crafts style. Um, it was really a gift to his parents, but he, um, he donated to the town of Truro. It was built to be a library and to be a library in perpetuity. A fair number of people come here looking about the history of their house. Uh, they've, they've bought a house or they're about to renovate a house um, and they want to know about its history and what the appropriate Cape Cod style was, who lived there, what, what was the historic role of this building. And it's very, very important in having a continuous and valuable history to know, to, to root yourself, to, to know what your place is. So let's say you've come in here and you want to find out more about Pond Village or Pond Village North Truro. And so what I'm going to do is show you a couple of maps and photographs and postcards that will give you information about, about this part of the town. Oh, the best thing I've ever found was the 1830 map of Truro. When I discovered that up at the museum, I realized I was one of a kind. It's John Hale's map of Truro in 1830. It's the oldest original map we have. It was the town's public library until 1999. So from 1912 to 1999, it was actually the only library in Truro. And many local people remember coming here. People have said to me, I haven't been in here since I was a little kid. You know, it was, you know, it was, it was just the same, except that there were books this going this direction, and you know there was a corner where they did storytelling and all of that kind of thing. And my grandfather was a custodian here, so a big thing for me was to come with him every Saturday morning and put the flag up. So I, I was, you know, young and I, I wasn't very strong then. So I said, Grandpa, how am I going to mow the front lawn? I'll show you how to mow the lawn. So he. Bring, he says, bring the lawnmower up, and he come out with a rope. And I said, well, what are you going to do with a rope? He tied the rope on the lawnmower, let the lawnmower go down the hill, and he pulled it up. Now that's how you're going to do it. In 1999, the, Turo, um, the town of Truro built a much larger library um, up Route 6, more towards the Provincetown area. And this library was closed down. It was really not used for anything, but because Elisha Wiley Cobb donated it to the town of Truro, it was a building that was owned by the town. We found out about it uh, around 2003, 2004, when the Truro Historical Society was looking for a place to put our maps and our paper archives um, in a building other than the Highland House because we had no climate control there. So we petitioned the town of Truro um, along with the Historical Commission to be able to use the Cobb and call it an archive uh, and use it as a library as it was meant to be for the Truro Historical Society and that was the beginning of it being a library for the historical museum and for the town. There was, we actually worked with the um, Historical Commission. Um, the building is now on the National Register, so it's really a historic building that's been now uh, documented to be on the National Register. There needed to be a lot of renovations done in the building. It had been empty for years and it really wasn't in usable shape. So we worked with the town of Truro to get a budget together and we actually were working with the Historical Commission at first to try and get an architectural firm or a design firm to help us envision how we were going to make it into a usable archive. So they, they approached me with a set of plans and the first thing we did was we removed the shelving in the building and we got the building um, you know ready to do work inside. And this was all done in-house. We had a lot of talent at the time and everybody took great pride in, in the work. You know, I felt as though it was an honor to, to preserve it for the town and uh, make it so people could see it and uh, you know, love it and enjoy it. When 
you come into the Cobb, it really has a wonderful, warm feeling. There's a lot of wood, there's a lot of light. So the building was um, actually built in 1912, but that was just the, the first part of the building of the Cobb. It, uh, in 1930, they added a clock tower and cupola and a brass plaque that was uh, provided by Elisha Cobb's daughter, Nellie Cobb McGee. And that was in honor of her father. And this was in the family tradition of the Cobbs actually uh, building the building in the first place to honor their parents. Somebody pointed out that we had inherited a large collection of maps from the John Dyer family. They were given, donated by John R. Dyer, Jr. So upstairs they had a room full of these maps and somebody had gone through half of them and cataloged them and I started going through the other ones. And every other item that we had on paper, was it was photographs or ship's logs, um, any type of book, manuscript, pamphlet, all of those items were able to come over to the Cobb and be here year round and be useful for people to come in and have a look at um, because we have climate control now. Here we have photographs of numerous shipwrecks that have taken place in, in the history of the town. We have archives in, around the other side there of the Coast Guard, the early logs showing records of actual shipwrecks that occurred, uh, and also the people, um, particularly the small family, that ran the Highland Light in the 19th century. The, the deterioration of the fishing industry is, is not just a Truro issue. In the case of Truro, the terrible gale destroyed half the Truro fishing fleet and a lot of, a lot of Truro men as well. When uh, Henry David Thoreau came to Truro and featured Truro in his book on Cape Cod, uh, a miserable hovel of a house was pointed out to him and he said, who lives there? Thoreau was fairly shocked by the level of poverty that, that he saw out here and someone said three widows. There is an argument that the, that the community did not recover. Uh, the population of Truro today, which is the old year population, of, which is about 2,000, is only just reaching what the population was in the 1840s. You know, there's wonderful histories of this, that, and the other thing in Truro. Um, there's at least three volumes of Cape Cod histories, which include separate sections on Truro. Um, plus Richard Whalen's book, History of Turo. And the tidbits are all over the place. Sometimes you find stuff that's surprising. We have um, logs of some ships that sailed in the 1830s, 1840s, 1850s. They were mainly um, in the mackerel fishery. Um, and we also have logs of the shops in Truro that would uh, occasionally sell the fish or ship the fish. And then after the railway came in in the 1870s, the uh, fish was packed in ice at cold storage and put on, a, put on a train and taken to Boston. We have in one of these archival boxes here um, a detailed um, granular account of the laying of the railroad from the Wellfleet border up to Provincetown. We also have uh, photographs of the track being laid and some quite charming photographs of um, ladies and gentlemen um, at the North Truro or Truro um, train station. And the, not only can you find where the railroad track was, you can also find where other tracks were um, by using old maps, which showed these cartways uh, and occasionally, you know, single 
single person tracks uh, that probably were um, from the time of the um, native people, the Payamets, who, who lived here and used them. And the story goes that William Bradford, Miles Mile Standish, <coughs> came back to Truro in 1621 or 1622 looking for more corn. And they had Squanto as an interpreter. And the question was asked of the Indians, what do you call yourselves? And they answered, Payomet, we are of this place. We are really encourage people to become members and to volunteer. And actually, if you are a volunteer, then you um, are a member for free. Donations are needed to keep our services viable. So we ask that people make a donation, or even better than that, we ask that people join the Truro Historical Society.